Hello and happy almost summer solstice. Um, I hope you are great no matter where you are in the world and thank you for joining me today for this talk about summer solstice and uh, ways to celebrate it. So um, it's just gone after 12 o'clock here in the UK where I'm based and uh, I am going live as I do every week but this week is a tiny bit more special uh, because I've got a different focus than normal. I'm just aware that there's a lot of sunlight coming into my room and everything's reflecting on my glasses but anyway um, hopefully that won't be too distracting for you tiny bit for me. If you are watching this live then don't forget to put a hashtag live in the comments. If you've got a question don't forget to put that in as well and uh, if I don't see it during the the live then sometimes there's a bit of a delay and they don't actually pop up my end until afterwards um, but then I will do my best to obviously reply to them. If you are watching this as a replay, uh, then do make sure that you put hashtag replay in uh, so that I know that you've been there. And also the way that Facebook works and this community works is that more people will see it once um, more people have already had a chance to do so. Okay, so uh, what is the summer solstice? Now, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, you will be aware that we are in summer right now. For some people, the summer solstice is kind of the official start of summer. Um, and if you are living in the Southern Hemisphere, then you are getting close to the winter solstice. Um, and uh, basically in the Northern Hemisphere, because that's where I am based and so I'm talking about the summer solstice today. Um, it's kind of a midway point if you like throughout the year. So it's the opposite of the winter solstice uh, and it's time of the year where the sun reaches the highest point in the sky. It means that the days uh, or the day is as long as uh, it will possibly be at any point during the day but during the year and uh, also the most amount of light will be coming through. So uh, basically uh, more light than darkness and then obviously the opposite is the case uh, in the winter solstice where it's the darkest that it will be. Now from um, a historic point of view and I've made some notes because I want to make sure I, I mention all the things I had in mind for today. Um, traditionally, it was um, a celebration and this is in many cultures. So this is not only in Nordic cultures or Nordic culture, um, but in many cultures, this has been kind of a very significant point of the year. So traditionally, um, the the solstice, the summer solstice, is kind of that midway point. It falls between the, the, the sowing season and the harvest season. So it was a time uh, where it was kind of a chance to stop uh, and to celebrate. And obviously in many ancient cultures, including for the Vikings, many people don't realize that they were um, actually uh, farmers as well. Um, but for them, it was also the opportunity to kind of uh, make some offerings, you know, uh, do some magic uh, to ensure that the harvest would be good. And this is not specific just for the Vikings um, or Nordic culture. This is the same across most cultures, um, ancient cultures in the world. Um, the Druids had this lovely saying that to, um, on the summer solstice, this was kind of the day, it was the wedding between, uh, let me see, I get this right, wedding of heaven and earth. Um, and I think it's, that's a really beautiful way, beautiful way of looking at it. Um, and obviously with summer and the summer solstice comes this lightness of being. So there's definitely um, something magical about this time of year. June in general, I think, is a month where there's more lightness of being because you're entering into the summer period, everything's in bloom, uh, the days are longer, there's more daylight, it gives us more energy. Um, but generally also, there is just this sense that um, midsummer is a bit of a magical time. Now, all through the Scandinavian countries, uh, Midsummer is celebrated. It's celebrated in various ways, and I talked about this in, um, in a previous talk. But um, in Denmark and also Norway, 
Uh, the biggest myth celebration is the celebration of St. Hans, uh, and that takes place on the 23rd of June, so just a couple of days after. And again, this is a mish of traditions, but uh, it can trace its roots back to the ancient Vikings as well, and possibly even to people before that. Um, the way they would celebrate and the way that we are celebrating is um, in Scandinavia, Denmark and Norway. Sweden does it a tiny bit different, but the way um, it's celebrated is that uh, there's a big bonfire and the bonfire was traditionally there to kind of ward off any evil that there might be. So again, it will be a way of securing the harvest. It could also be... Um, a way of, uh, you know, sending all evil spirits away. And uh, in, in modern Denmark and Norway, this is very much uh, still kind of symbolized by uh, the burning of a witch effigy, at least in Denmark. Um, and um, obviously it's, it's more of a fun take on that these days uh, because uh, no one wants to burn any witches anymore, but it's the symbolization and effigy of something evil that you would send away. Uh, this haunts back to the really dark times, obviously, um, in Europe, uh, as well as Denmark and Norway with the witch hunts. Um, but I think people don't take it so much um, literally these days, which is a good thing. And there is room for more magic this, this day and age, which is, um, you know, lovely because I think this time and age really calls for a bit more magic. So some of the things I'm going to be talking about um, are not necessarily associated with uh, the modern celebration of um, Midsummer in Scandinavia, but more of uh, looking at what ancient traditions used to do and incorporating some of what some people might call woo-woo uh, into uh, this magical time of year. So, um, as I said, the, uh, the time of year calls for almost like a bit of magic. And the reason that there is a fire is because, uh, well, fire has many symbolic meanings, but it's a, it's a purification symbol. It's a way of uh, offering the gods, calling upon the gods. Um, some people even say that is why, you know, churches still use candles these days. It's kind of a way of um, purifying a space and calling upon the gods and the angels, if you like. Obviously, in a church, I guess it wouldn't be gods, but um, you know what I mean? It's kind of uh, evoking the divine. And the Vikings uh, would have um, often bonfires as part of their offerings and their celebrations. And many of these, especially in the summer months, were collective celebrations. And they would allow people to gather. And when, some pe when people gather, there is an, a lovely energy. It kind of raises um, the energy generally. And we know that, you know, you can compare it to going to a, a, a big uh, event or festival. And, uh, hope, you know, hopefully it's, it's getting to that point of also where you are in the world post-pandemic that people can go out again and do these things. And it basically, it, we, we lift each other up. And uh, also, so with uh, the, even the modern Sankt Hans celebration, because they are um, community celebrations and you have people uh, coming together, it's an opportunity to reach out, to talk, to get to know people and, um, yes, celebrate the magic of the night. So especially, and this goes for all of Scandinavia really, uh, this time of year is the perfect time, you know, to stay up late, to watch the stars come out, you know, depending on where you are, they might not come out because it's the longest day of the year and the sun will not set until really, really late, if at all. And it's an opportunity to uh, maybe go for uh, an, an evening swim or something like that. Um, and a lot of the bonfires are still on the beaches and it allows people to not only get the sense of community but it's on the beach uh, it's it's where the horizon is the widest but also um, it will in Scandinavia often allow you to look across the shore or maybe see the neighboring town their bonfire on on the shore as well 
Um, so it's uh, it's a way of connecting people as well as kind of connecting to the magic of the season, if you like. Now, the Vikings would have different rituals. Um, so, but one key one that I personally like to use is to kind of make the most of the fire and write down on a piece of paper either things that are to be let go of or uh, wishes. So it doesn't really matter which way, it can be a combination of both, but by then um, surrendering it to the fire with intention, something magical happens. Because you know you've done it and the fire burns it off and you're just letting it go and you know that you've kind of stated what you want to do. So it could be that it's something that you want to stop doing. It can be a bad habit or something like that, that you want to stop doing. Uh, it can also be that you want to welcome something else into your life. Maybe you want a new job. Maybe you want uh, just genuinely to have more spare time with your family. Maybe you want to be in nature more. You want to create more moments that allow you to celebrate and have happiness and hygge in it you could write that down and then creating a little ceremony around that uh, lighting a fire watching the flames saying to yourself exactly what it is that you've written on your piece of paper so clarity around this is a key thing and then releasing it to the fires now obviously vikings would have done something similar they probably wouldn't have written written it on paper they had a tendency to write in stones um, but there would be a way of um, uh, saying things out loud by the fire that might not be practical where you are you might not even be able to have a fire so there are different options um, obviously fire bowls are very popular and more common now so having a fire bowl if it's safe to do so or it could be as simple as just lighting a candle and you don't by all means do not burn anything if it's not safe to do so um, and that's one way of releasing it and it kind of goes back to uh, the ancient times and obviously looking at the the current midsummer celebrations in the Nordic countries this is very much what happens because the effigy uh, that's being burnt as the evil is obviously something you're sending away it's a symbol it can it means different things for different people and it's being released it's being sent off and that's basically making the space for something new to come into your life so if you're not quite sure exactly what it is that you maybe want to uh, attract into your life, what you want to release into your life, then there is different ways of doing it. And again, midsummer is a great point because it's kind of a halfway point in the year. It's a great time to kind of take stock of what's been and, and what, what's going to be taken with you for the rest of the year. So journaling it can be a really, really powerful exercise to kind of uh, set you down set yourself down to do around midsummer and i would recommend doing it before the 21st of june if you can uh, otherwise on the day itself but sometimes it it takes us getting into a zone in order to kind of open up journaling and i'll be absolutely honest i used to hate journaling i never really you know and in, in before you know probably about five years ago I, I really didn't enjoy the process and then I realized that uh, basically the way I was approaching it and also the openness to it is actually everything that matters and journaling doesn't need to be a cumbersome thing it can be five minutes and actually sometimes that is good so that's one of the things that I will sometimes do I will set aside five minutes I will set the timer on my phone or whatever I have and I will just do journaling for five minutes on a specific topic and not thinking about what's actually coming, just kind of letting it flow. It could also be that you want it to set aside longer. You can set a timer, but again, you don't need to set a timer. The whole idea is just to kind of let it flow, but having a specific time frame in order to do this and uh, to create again, a bit of a ceremony around this and by journaling ahead of midsummer it can be a way for us to clarify our mind so that actually when the midsummer comes we can celebrate and we can look ahead 
to the rest of summer with ease and uh, less worry, if you like. So, um, what to journal about? So I've written down three things that might be questions you could answer yourself. I think they are three questions that, you know, they interlink and also they, they kind of make sense together. But if you answer it all um, in one go, or maybe you feel that one of these are the stronger point for you to work on, then you do that. But basically, the question you could ask yourself is, since the last summer solstice, what has grown in my life? So basically list um, any achievements that you are proud of and it doesn't matter how big or small. You could, you could write a whole list or maybe there is something really special that has grown that you are very, very proud of and you want to highlight that so you can journal around that for a couple of minutes. And then once you have a list of the things that has grown in your life for the past year, then ask yourself, are you also reaping what you are sowing? So basically where you are putting in the most effort in your life, are you also reaping the benefits? Um, if you are not, then this is also the perfect time to ask yourself, you know, why are you not reaping the benefits? Is there something that is blocking you? Um, and the beauty of the journaling is to kind of write and not stop, stop to think, but literally just write what comes to you as you are journaling. So just keep writing and trust whatever comes will come. And you might not know what it is, you know, and you might not know the answer and that's fine too. But if something comes up, just write it down and you can go back and review it later. And then a third uh, thing, a third question to ask yourself when you are doing your midsummer journaling is what is it that you want to create in your life going forwards? And that can be looking ahead to the next solstice, summer solstice, or it can be like in the next six months. Looking at what would you like to sow? What seeds, if you like, would you like to sow? And what do you need to do in order to sow those seeds so that you can reap the benefits that you are hoping to. So these are obviously all kind of the, the language is centered around um, harvest and so on. And again, it makes sense because this is the time of year when nature inspire us, inspires us to look at what is blooming and what is working. And Journaling is something you can do all year round, but around midsummer and summertime, it might be easier because also there is this sense of the lightness of being because the light is surrounding us. There is more light. You might feel more energized. So these are all things that kind of work with the, the common how should we say, the common theme of what surrounds us. This is the same for, for most people, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and it's all about utilizing that special power because like I said, the more people, the better. So then once you have written down and you've journaled on it, you've got a choice. You can obviously keep what you've written down and you can then review it next solstice if you are making this like an annual ritual. And I recommend that you do because it's a lovely thing to do. Or you can um, you can burn it in your little uh, ritual if you like. Uh, and by burning it, we are releasing it basically. So we're not only are releasing our attachment to the outcome, but we are kind of offering it off to, you can call it God, the universe, whatever you want to call, but you're handing it over and you're saying this, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to achieve. It might also be that you, obviously, you, you, you like what you've written down. So you're going you're gonna to write something uh, on a little piece of paper that is, sums up what it is that you want to achieve or let go of or change. And then that is a kind of what you are offering, offering up in your fiery celebration. 
So that's one way of doing a, a powerful uh, midsummer celebration, and it kind of links in with the ancient as well as modern traditions. Another thing that you uh, might want to do is uh, doing a, a meditation on this. And I will offer um, up a meditation in my group that you can use, uh, that you can join me in, and that you can modify if you want to, but a very specific midsummer meditation. Finally, and also I should just say meditation, it's a guided visual journey. So some people get terrified when they hear the word meditation because they go like, oh, I can't meditate. I don't know what I'm, I think I'm doing it wrong and all of this. This is a, this is a, a guided uh, meditation. And that means that I am talking through and you are using the power of your imagination to um, harness the power of the 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 meditation itself and of your own subconscious and finally a last little thing which is one of my favorite little things um to do is kind of a midsummer bath now uh, if you like baths then that's great you can obviously have them all year round um but uh, a midsummer bath is kind of uh, or again it can be like a ritual it can be like a ceremony if you like and there is no set rules for how to do this. Um, but the whole idea is to kind of, again, surrender what it is that you want to let go of. Uh, and also you want to take this time out to kind of pamper and nurture yourself as well. And acknowledge all the hard work you've done, how far you've come, and the fact that you do so much hard work and then it's taking the time and actually allowing yourself to just enjoy and be uh, ahead of the rest of the year or until next midsummer if you like so i personally like a nice uh, salt bath and obviously keeping in in um Kind of in tune with the season if you want to you could add flower petals to it as well otherwise a handful of bath salt or himalayan salt whatever takes your fancy maybe a couple of essential oils now because of the season i would choose to use something like lang lang or um, uh, lavender because uh, it ties in with kind of the scent of summer for me. If you do use any oils in your bath, make sure that they are oils that you uh, can use safely in bath water. And uh, most you can if you dilute them well enough. And uh, finally, if you want to, you could obviously light some candles if it's safe to do so, you know, uh, near the bath. Or you could even add, if you've got crystals that you know are suitable to be submerged in salt water, you could add those in as well. And it's about um, enjoying the bath, allowing yourself to be in it. And also, it's a bit like the, the intentional thing I've talked about before, thinking that how this bath uh, not only cleans away kind of the dirt on your body, but that it also cleans away any old beliefs, any old habits, any uh, old thoughts, um, any old stresses that you might be hanging on to. And just imagine that it's kind of just seeping into the salt water and instead you are taking in all the goodness uh, of what's coming and it's coming to you in the goodness of the salt, uh, which is beautiful for the body. A salt bath is one of the best things you can do. And also obviously the beauty of the flowers if you choose to add those and the essential oils. So um, a lovely midsummer bath. If you are anything like me, you might want to have your bath after you've had your fire. We normally have a midsummer fire in the garden uh, and obviously these things can be smoky. So then I like to have my midsummer bath afterwards. And as I said previously, I will do the journaling in the leading up to midsummer. So when do you need to do this? Do you need to do it exactly on the 21st? Well, it is the day that uh, is, again, to use the Druid expression, um, the marriage between heaven and earth. It is the day when the energy is the strongest, but it's, you know, you can do it, um, you know, if you do it a day after or a day before, I'm sure it doesn't make big difference in the great scheme of things. 
Um, but it's about allowing yourself, I think, and that's that's one of the key messages I want to get across. It's allowing yourself to actually do this and to take this opportunity to create such a celebration and um, to make it something extraordinary because this is an extraordinary day in the calendar in in the year. And although many in, in, in modern society, we might still celebrate it. I mean, money communities will have maybe community fairs or something like that, uh, which is kind of a leftover from, from the ancient traditions. But this is just taking it a tiny step further. So there you go, some uh, celebration, uh, some midsummer celebration, some midsummer magic maybe for you um, to consider coming up to the summer solstice. I hope you have a beautiful one and that you will make the most of this magical time of year. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.